what you are about to watch is most definitely not a true and accurate reflection of real life events that have just occurred. Hey babe, if we're going to do the sailing thing, you need to clean your craft room. Yeah babe. Oh no. I found more whips. Welcome, Flash Friends, to several million stitches. Where the fabric doesn't count, the floss isn't fancy, and the stitches don't matter. I'm Siobhan, and this is the Room of Doom. A very sunny hello from wintry South Africa. That's a cross-stitch pile of magazines. There's another pile of cross-stitch magazines over there. And somewhere in there, there, somewhere in there, is a third one. Happy Friendship Day! We're sitting in my bedroom because I'm lazy. My Indiana Jones impression was filmed in my craft room, where the remnants of my craft shop, boxed and bagged up, was left to be dealt with later. But later has come. The room of doom must be emptied. Before we start, if you want to, you can follow me on Instagram and at Facebook at Several Million Stitches. If I forget any information about my projects, you can find it on my website, severalmillionstitches.page. There you will also find the links to where you can get most of the patterns I stitch. I will never remember to add everything in the description box every time. This seemed more expedient. I am Siobhan, in a country that doesn't speak Gaelic. One time I invited a new girl in school to my birthday party and she spelt my seven letter name with 25 letters. I still have that birthday card from when I was eight. I have been stitching since I was eight or nine. Today I'm predominantly a full coverage yeah. stitcher. I stitch one over two on 40 count or higher, linen or even weave, whatever I can get from my local Jacksons. Why? Because I'm stingy. I am betrothed. I have grown a people larvae who is pre-teening, and at one point I had five cats, two dogs, two bats, a chicken, and a horse. I am a spoonie and a zebra, a reader, a series lover, a movie lover, a seamstress, crocheter, and crest stitcher, just to name a few. Pre-Pan Pan, I had two small businesses. Post-2020, I'm a wrangler of mess and all-around awful homeschooler. When it comes to dealing with cleaning out a room, like the Room of Doom, I have these sage pieces of advice. I highly recommend, before embarking on a journey like this, that you do not have unresolved childhood traumas surrounding finances that manifest as hoarding, combined with an undiagnosed ADHD and the procrastination curse that comes with that. I also don't recommend adding the stress of deciding to go sailing around the world before the middle of 2021. So you now have a deadline for when you have to divest yourself of all of your materialistic possessions that you then miss due to a bout of long COVID that's going on seven months of hell. I do recommend adopting the practice of Swedish death cleaning and procrastinating by filming seven floss tube videos that probably won't ever be uploaded. Also, throughout the entire process, keep reminding your hubby that he gave you his comorbidity high-risk wife, the COVIDs, after you hadn't left the house for nine months, he absolutely can help you go through boxes. And no, you're not still bitter. You're just ahead in the husband-wife argument-winning points. To the stitch!
Ching though. I am not starting off with a parade. Whip, FFO, or otherwise. I want to see how this works. If the editing and uploading is going to be easy or not. So this is just a quick, hi, here's a glimpse, happy friendship day type of thing. If you have any curious questions, ask them in the comment section and I will answer in my next video. Or if you want anonymity, DM me on Insta or use the contact form on my site. And if you stick around to the end, there's a bit of footage from our hour and a half long drive to go experience my area's version of proper snow. So let's get into the things. I started cross stitching in about 1995 with this little Christmas teddy kit. He is stitched 2 over 1 on 14 count Ada. He is a little bit stained. The arms of the crosses go in different directions in some places, but mostly they're all the same. And surprisingly, not in the direction I stitch my crosses now, which is weird. I also stitch the back stitched outline first before filling in the colour, which, well, I know better now. Don't do back stitch. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> I really need to make him into a little Christmas ornament, I think. He's approximately 300 stitches in total, not including backstitching, and is the first project I'm going to put into the stitch account for finished things at the end of this video. Behold! All the patterns I recently bought from lightunicorndesigns.com. If you follow me on Instagram, you've seen these already. Light Unicorn Designs is a U South African designer. I don't buy patterns regularly. In the beginning of my cross stitching, I only stitched freebies and photocopies from library books. Now I'll save up and get maybe one pattern or a couple magazines every two or three years. But they had an amazing sale on. I haven't bought myself anything since pre Pan Pan. I thought I'll just go window shop and wish list. And then I was paying with my debit card and wondering how I was going to tell my husband I spent some of the money for our sailing adventure on patterns. They were only 37 rand each, another PDF patterns on my wish list from Hey or Crusted Studio and the like are like 280 rand each, which was a 3 days salary for me pre Pan Pan, so I spent a lot of time wish listing and stitching freebies or charting my own designs while I save up for patterns. I feel no shame. DMC is 14 rand a skein here and I'm still trying to complete my set. I have priorities and patterns weren't high on those lists. I did restrict myself to only 6 patterns, but my wish list has about 40 patterns in it now from Light Unicorn, and that is a problem. Next, my something borrowed. You'll never melt again on me. Artwork by Borda de Nut Argeron. Designer and conventional crustage from Australia. I'm stitching her 1 over 2 on 56 count white Oxford linen. This is actually something gifted, not something borrowed. Pennington Terrace racked her to me a few months ago. Please go check her out on YouTube and follow her on her Instagram. This rack was so out of the blue, you have no idea. I have never received anything like this in my entire life. I won't make it awkward again, I promise, Amanda. I've nicknamed this project Project Natalie. I, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Originally, I was calling her Project Melt, but I found out about this amazing Inuit climate activist Matali Oklik, and I really like the idea of this being a tribute to her and the cause. I grew up on a farm in South Africa. We as a country have been battling crippling, crippling droughts for over half a decade now with massive water shortages everywhere, record-breaking cold spells and a constant threat against food security, not to mention all our political issues, but anyway. In our plans to go sailing around the world, my family and I are excruciatingly aware of the changes to weather patterns and the loss of ocean life caused by rising sea temperatures. I started stitching on 20 May 2021 and the almost perfect stitching plan goal is to stitch 484 stitches a day for 650 days. And that would be going much better if I hadn't decided I really wanted to complete this next project this year. Fiery Dragon, designer, StitchX Cross Stitch Designs. My sister gave this to me for my birthday in 2018, so I made it my birthday start for 2019. I'm stitching smog on 40 count black Oxford linen, and let me tell you, I am never stitching on black anything ever again. It, just, it slows me down so much. Couple that with this pattern being a paper pattern when I have sold my soul to Pattern Keeper, and I'm literally stitching a quarter to half the stitches I normally stitch in a day. 
I'm in the final stretch though. I've hit the bottom of the piece. Hopefully I get a finish on Smog for Smogus 2021, which is what I am aiming for. Which brings me to... After becoming a statistic of the Pan Pan, I decided to do no more whips by the wayside for my fam to deal with. And especially with leaving to go sailing, there was no way I could fit dozens of large projects on our 33 foot boat this big. So I was going to finish as many of my projects as I could before we go sailing. There were only four of them that were sitting anyway. No big deal, right? And then it happened. The room of doom cleanup. This is the story of five pieces lost to the room of doom and time, and a sixth relegated to the UFO pile. The next four stitches were all stitched on the same 42 count even weave blue fabric. This is from a period in my cross stitching life I like to call the blue period, which I will one day show you all of the projects that I did on the blue fabric. But I had this fabric because my mom said a very strong no to me buying more Ada once I had finished the first 50 centimeter piece I was given. And out of sheer necessity, I was forced to change to even weave. And this is the only piece my mom's stash that would work. Why were they not my something blue? Because that would be a video unto itself due to how many projects I did on that blue fabric. And because when I found these projects two weeks ago and realized I had forgotten all about them without completing them, they became my not something blue and became instead the stones in my stitchy shoes. The first is The Castle by Teresa Wensler. This pattern is discontinued, which is more than mildly annoying because I cannot find my original copy or the floss list. I just have my working copy. I, I found the original of my other Teresa Wensler that I never started, Carousel Horse. But this one is at present gone. The castle is my oldest whip. I started it in 2001, which means it's 20 years old. It stitched two over two with many substitutions because my mom couldn't justify buying me DMC and I had to use what I was given when a great aunt died. Namely, this very random batch of JP coats and anchor cottons, which are so old, the numbers aren't even in the anchor listings for me to correspond with my DMC collection. The really sad thing is that this piece is pretty much destroyed. I can't get rid of these brown marks in the fabric from it being in the box and on the hoop. Many, many washings have not helped. Also, I don't stitch with two strands anymore and it has blended threads, but I suppose I could try color match and use a close single color instead? Maybe? It's worth a try, right? The second is Rose Arbor. I had to deep dive the internet trying to find information for this piece because I only have a photocopy of the pattern with no name and no source. I eventually managed to find a picture of it on eBay. Do not ask me how, I genuinely can't tell you. I am clearly the Google Queen. All I can tell you is that it's from a tapestry magazine with Madeira cottons. It's stitched two over two with many substitutions, just like the castle, and I started it in 2003. I have decided I'm going to finish this one. It's small and it shouldn't take long, and I do kind of like the picture still, so here's hoping. The third is The Lighthouse by Crystal Dable. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. It's a free pattern on cyberstitches.com, but when I started it in 2005, it was on a GeoCity site. Don't ask about the substitutions, there are many. I am fully aware it looks absolutely nothing like the finished project. Thank you, Teresa Langdon, whoever you are, for stitching this to and putting your finish on the Cyber Stitches site or I would have no idea what the finished project is supposed to look like. I am also very aware of the fact that the edge is only one to two centimeters. For deaths, I'm restarting this so I can finish it. It's small, only 120 by 96, which is... Wow. 11,500 stitches. Okay, not so small. That's at least half a month's worth of stitching. Anyway, the fourth is my one and only Mirabilia. Crystal Symphony by Nora Corbett. I loved her dress, I loved the chandelier, I loved the roses in the corners. Everything. The pattern was a gift and just like the castle, is totally AWOL. I only have my working copy. I didn't have Mill Hill beads when I started her in 2006, so I still don't. 
So I used metallic DMC and regular seed beads to do the chandelier, and I substituted the colours for the rose corners for my JP Coats cotton and stitched one over two. Oh no! Some of these are two over two. My bad. Why have I stitched one? Sadly, this piece was in with the castle and is damaged. You can see the brown marks on the fabric there. I cannot get them out. I'm going to have to restart it as well. But now that I'm saying all this, I wonder if I really should. I wonder if I really should. I mean, I have so many other pieces I want to start, but she is my only Mirabilia. You have to have at least one Mirabilia to call yourself a proper cross-stitcher, right? I mean, it feels like a rite of passage I haven't completed. I would need to dye whatever fabric I use, though. Make custom. Hmm. The fifth and last piece is Fairy Morning Stretch. I deep dived the internet with this one too, and even my phenomenal googling powers couldn't find any information about it. Not even the original artwork it was made from. All I have is that it was a freebie from a GeoCity site in 2004, and the designer went by the name Loretta. So that's what I call the piece. Loretta! I don't know, a fairy named Loretta seemed so incongruous it really cracked me up when I was 21. Um, so Loretta is a piece from my cream muslin stitchy days. This came after I ran out of the blue even weave I stole from my mother. I started her in 2007, stitched one over two on 42 count in the called for DMC colors, and I adore her. I can't believe I completely forgot about her in a book for, oh wow, uh, almost 15 years. I'm gonna floss. She's almost 15. Okay, I'm finishing her before I do the lighthouse, I'm sorry. Number six is Peacock's Garden. A Peacock's Garden wasn't a lost thing. I knew where George was the whole time. Sitting on my bedside table, still in his hoop, waiting for me to stop telling myself I didn't want to finish him. He's from the Linen and Threads 2019 Mystery Cell, and I started him in January of 2019, fully intending to complete him along with everybody else with the cell in 2019. It was my first ever cell. Then they released the garden in February, and I couldn't figure out what variegated thread I wanted to use, and I just never picked him up again. He stitched one over two on 64 count lilac baby pink variegated cotton eva weave. I don't think you can see it properly in the camera. So basically this is bed sheeting. He was an experiment to see if I could enjoy stitching on something smaller because I wanted to use even less floss, even less fabric, and even less wall space. The wall space being the most important part of this whole scenario. And I did enjoy it. I did. I mean, he's cute. I think he needs some backstitching. Why can't I hold him? He needs some backstitching, but yeah. So, the next time I bought linen, I specifically looked for an even smaller count, and I even tried stitching one over one on my epic Pokemon piece, which I'll show you another time. The point of this whole ramble, though, is that I wanted to finish George before he turns three. So, after the lighthouse, I think? So very more stretch lighthouse and then George. I do have to add that I found out just yesterday actually that Alicia from Resist Stitch is doing a finish what you started cell 2021. I don't know where I've been under a rock maybe so I guess I'm participating in that now. <laughs> that brings us to the end of this brief introduction. I have 38 finishes, 19 current projects, and 600 waiting to be stitched or wishlist patterns. This is a genuine drop in the ocean. Thank you so much for spending some of your precious time with me watching my video. And now for the snow.
look on the left. Look on the left. Pick someone to come and be on your side, Em. The little guy comes right now. You don't trust my photography, eh? I have my phone with the new information that was all been updated on my website now, so it's all in one place for me to find. So if I'm looking down, that's what I'm looking at. I am not looking at the very shameful mess all around my feet. You can see breathe. You need to breathe. Okay. Anyone who says that filming a floss tube video is easy is a liar. <laughs>